Hello, everyone. Did you know that almost everyone in the planet is operating below their potential due to the effects of the environment? Well, just a little bit about me. I'm Carrie Jarrett from The Hairwire, along with my co-host, Basan. Now, both of us have been studying epigenetics for a long time, and we are both certified trichologists. Now, today we're going to talk about briefly epigenetics and how it is tied in with trichology. Sam, do you want to throw in anything before I go deep into epigenetics? Hello, everyone. My name is Bisan, and welcome to The Hairwire. Today, we're going to do a short, small episode about epigenetics uh, and who is the best to talk epigenetics, my friend here, Carrie Jarrett. Go ahead, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> now, by an analyzing an individual's epigenetic markers, trichologists are able to identify specific treatments or lifestyle modifications that could promote healthy hair growth and prevent hair loss. Now, as trichologists, we are trained to help decipher the type of hair loss that you have because there's actually more than one type of alopecia. Now, as a trichologist, we'll go in and we'll help figure out what type of um, alopecia you have and figure it out. But a lot of times, a lot of the hair losses start from within and trying to fix what's happening inside. The majority of hair losses and uh, progressive hair losses are stemmed or started from having an unhealthy gut, and unhealthy lifestyle, or not operating at the body's fullest potential. Now, Basan and I and Sergio have been studying biohacking and epigenetics for a long time, and we wanted to talk about this topic because it does come up quite often. And now, essentially, if you're new to epigenetics, epigenetics is essentially how your genes and DNA are transcribed based on their environment. Now, myself, I've been studying epigenetics for a long time prior to taking trichology for my own health benefits. For those who don't know, don't know I have a rare blood condition. And, and for me, I was in and out of the hospital trying to figure what was going on. And until I really understood how to biohack and understand epigenetic biomarkers, my health pivoted immensely to the point that both the cross cancer clinics have been contacting me that I were in the province that I live in Calgary and Edmonton have been asked me what I've been doing differently and with them I do have to track everything I take I take blood work once a month I have to go do labs and I have evidential proof to see how it progressively has worked now with epigenetics it's really understanding your stress contributors and so the way I break it down to make it in layman's terms is when I'm studying somebody or um, investigating their epigenetic biomarkers or their actual epigenetic stress markers, I look at these four key contributing factors. First one is intake stress. So that's essentially what your body absorbs and consumes. So, you know, your medicine, lotions you put on your skin, the food that you eat every day. Now, the San, she has a wealth of knowledge on this. So I'll get her to talk about this after I talk about the three other biomarkers or the other contributing factors that I look at. Now, intake stress. The second one is environmental stress. So your everyday stresses on how things affect you daily. So for example, thinking about bills, somebody leaving a grocery cart in a parking lot. And sometimes it's just, you know, essentially changing how you perceive things. And sometimes it's just a little tweak on how you see things. Oftentimes you can have somebody with two people with the exact same amount of stress, but it's how they each individually let that weigh on their shoulders. And the third one is past trauma, or I call it fossilized stress. So essentially trauma that hasn't been addressed or perceived perceptions and values that don't allow align with your core values today. So for example, raising up, raising up in a family that doesn't align with who you've become as an individual, maybe weighing on your shoulders. And then the fourth one is physical stress, which I help, I kind of assess. And the physical stress from can be anything from getting in a car accident to the way you've morphed your body. For example, myself sitting at a computer all day, I stand tall usually all day, but then I go to my computer. Eventually, I start to hunch and create hunch and, and stress throughout my body, which is causes blips in your system as well. So me who studies trichology and epigenetics, I'll assess those four stress contributing factors for me to narrow down where the stress factor is coming from that may be affecting your overall health of your hair, hair loss, and so forth. Now, today we're just going to go deep a little bit onto intake stress because Bissan, she is the key on this one. She is an expert in food and absorption and research. So I'll let Bissan kind of take over from here. Excellent. Excellent. This is a great introduction to epigenetics, Carrie. I always learn from you. It's perfect. Just everything you said is just spot. 
right Thank on you. the on spot. So uh, let's talk about uh, nutrition. Uh, basically, um, we usually we are predisposed to have chronic diseases, or we are we have predispositions in our body that we were born with. But basically, with epigenetics, with tweaking our lifestyles, we actually can override these uh, predisposed predisposed uh, chronic diseases or diseases that will. Uh, will affect us at one point. So um, the easiest way to do um, uh, like changing of your lifestyle is changing the food you eat, the quality of the food you eat. Whatever you put on the fork is going to affect your your whole body. Basically, when you eat, it's not just food to fill our stomach. It's information that is transcribing our DNA to change it either to the to the worse or to the better. So, for example, if we eat junk food all the time, then what happens? Our body will get inflamed and our gut will stop working because it is against our nature to eat processed or highly processed food. Uh, we were born to eat mother nature food, like real food, the food that doesn't come with packages or uh, or a fr freezer food or all the shelf food. It has to be coming from mother nature. So the more whole food you eat, the better information you give your body to heal itself and go be, be inconsistent with the self, like ground ourselves, basically. Um, this is what we see, Carrie, with, with these um, uh, like nowadays, people are not in touch with nature because they don't eat nat natural food. They eat processed food all the time. And that is not like it's, it's not it's not going to be healthy in any ways. So anyway, let's go back to epigenetics and let's talk about our gut to begin with. If we have a leaky gut or we have um, a dysfunctional uh, digestive system, which 90 percent of the American people have it because as a result of the junk food we ate for a long, long time. Um, we need, first of all, to reassess our gut mi microbiome, make sure that it is healthy enough to absorb any nutrients we're gonna give it. Otherwise, it's gonna be a just a vicious cycle. And what, how we can do that, we can assess it with a simple stool, stool test that can be available online. Uh, these days, like, uh, like many of them, they're available online to just say, okay, what, whatever like your microbiome needs. Your microbiome is consistent of a lot of bacteria and the bad bacteria sometimes overgrow the, the, the good bacteria and they, these good bacteria won't function properly to absorb the, the nutrient properly. Therefore, if you know what kind of uh, bad bacteria you have in your stomach. Like for me, I was having a SIBO condition, which is uh, overgrowth of, um, of uh, uh, what's SIBO? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> God, sorry guys. I have a postpartum uh, brain fog. I have SIBO and I have been talking about that for a long time. Anyway. <laughs> So how did I overcome this? There's certain foods that was uh, forbidden for me, like like broccoli, like onions, like ca like cabbages, um, garlic. These foods are very healthy foods, but for my special um, my special condition, I should stop eating these foods until my 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 microbiome heal then I will continue. And now two years later, after actually I healed my microbiome by stopping these foods and, and having the proper personalized uh, um, prebiotics, because also prebiotics is not all the prebiotics. We are all like, uh, we can have the same prebiotic. It's not, it has to be personalized depending on what kind of bacteria your gut is missing and what kind of good guys you wanna put in your gut to um, to fight the bad guys. <laughs> so basically after two years of taking the proper probiotics and did not eat broccoli, um, cauliflower, onion and garlic, believe it or not, onion and garlic are the best food ever, but I couldn't eat it for two years. But now slowly, slowly, I can introduce these foods again to my stomach and I, my body actually accept that because my body is not getting inflamed when I'm eating these foods because my, 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 my gut healed already. So this is one part of it, healing the microbiome, making sure our microbiome is good enough to absorb the nutrients. Now, second step is what we're going to put on this fork, um, like whole foods, uh, green leaves, right? But all this um, 
I know this should be a little like it's gonna sound a little bit tacky, but we should eat as much as we can organic food. Um, like in our in our grandmother and our ancestors, grandmother and grandfather, they didn't care about organic or not organic because the amount of her herbicides and pesticides wasn't as massive as we have it here, especially in the in the modern world here. Like like when we go to the Middle East, we don't even say organic or not organic because you know, like my grandmother has her own garden outside and she has no idea what pesticides is or she will never use it. Uh, but here, unfortunately, we we buy our foods. We Most of us, we don't have time to grow our foods. If we grew our food ourselves, that will be awesome. But anyway, going back to buying as organic, organic uh, food as much as we can, depending on the budget, as the budget allows, grow whatever you can grow grow like your at least your herbs grow it on, on the window of the of the kitchen because these herbs actually are anti-inflammatory uh, herbs if you put if you put fresh herbs in your meat in your stew in your salad they will act as a fresh uh, anti-inflammatory agent that will help take your your health like one step ahead um uh, we uh, like of course we like Eat, eating wild wild salmon, wild fish, wild codfish, uh, grass finished protein, grass finished meat, protein uh, like poultry or or meat. So what I'm trying to say is, the more we can invest in our health right now, the better it's going to be for later on. I would say personally, my personal opinion is, I would like to buy like pay 20% more on my food today rather than paying a huge bill when I'm in my 60s paying for all my infl inflammation and inflammatory diseases that will uh pro like that will uh, be like uh, like like diabetes or like Alzheimer's all, like that will present itself as a chronic disease. So, yeah, you can't afford now. I hear that all the time. People are saying, I can't afford to eat healthy right now, but you can't afford to down the road either. So you're investing in your own health exactly. right now. Exactly. So time is now. Oh, I love that. That was a great explanation. And you guys, with epigenetics, it's really understanding that it's not a one-size-fits-all world either. I find a lot of times you get all these recommendations, but it's really to understand who you are what your body needs, who you come from, and what your body is needing in this personal time. Now, with epigenetics, there's a lot of tests that you can do to check, like the testing for um, toxins. There's also cell well-being. A lot of trichologists now are starting to offer uh, cell well-being, which is where we do a hair strand test and a scan the papilla. I know Sergio offers that in his office. I offer that. The San, you have connections to offer that. Um, and you know what? Like, it's getting down to your DNA and exactly what you're lacking and what you're needing. And a lot of people don't really analyze that. And like the San said earlier, there's food that may not be beneficial for you. Prime example, um, my blood condition we talked about earlier, I have to watch the amount of high rich vitamin K foods because it will actually cause coagulation for me. And so just being really educated on your body makes a wealth of difference for your well-being, And especially with, um, any of those genetic biomarkers such as hair loss, brittle hair, and so forth. Now, you guys, we're going to cut it short. If you guys want to learn more about epigenetics, we are talking about doing a couple presentations. I know I have a few that I do at a couple centers here in my community. Maybe I go online and the three of us can talk about those presentations or epigenetics and a main whole episode on epigenetics. And I break it down to the four stress contributing factors I talked about earlier. If you do want to see more of that, please put in the comments. I want more. And so that way, you know, inspires us, encourages us to do more because we don't know what you want and tell us what you want to hear from us because that's what we're here for is we're here to educate and get you hair smart. Perfect. So thank you for joining us. One last thing, one last word also, like we live in a, in a great times right now, right? So everything is available online. You can have a, your DNA tested. You can have your, your microbiome tested, everything is available for us. Just ask questions and we will, um, we will make sure that we will answer you, will answer your question exactly right on. So thank you so much guys and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for future episodes. Bye for now.